All right. See that red star there. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Share screen. Right off the bat. All right. <laughs> yeah. There are like five of these right off the bat. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, yeah that's the hardest part of the the assignment is the far, first couple questions. <laughs> Just to scare you, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Somebody want to read it? I'm trying to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I got it. Um, in an article in the Journal of Small Business Management, successful startup businesses in the United States and Korea were compared. One set of data compared educational level, high school, undergraduate degree, master's degree, doctorate, doctoral degree, of people who managed successful startup companies in the United States and Korea. You want to determine if education level of managers of successful startup companies is independent of the country where they are from, United States and Korea. Which hypothesis test would be most appropriate for this analysis? I want to say independent sample t-test, but maybe that's too obvious because it says independent. Mm -hmm. So what helped me with this one, uh, I guess there are kind of two key parts. One is it's asking for which hypothesis test um, so what I did is I just, I opened up the spreadsheet and I looked at, um, which hypothesis tests deal with, um, like independence, I guess. And mm -hmm. the one that we just learned, the, um, hope I'm not giving away too much, but the chi squared test of independence or chi, mm -hmm. I guess, chi squared test of independence. That's the, um, yeah. Yeah, my wife is laughing at me. <laughs> Um, Sorry. <laughs> that's so. That's the one because the alternative hypothesis of that of yeah. the the mm -hmm. chi test of independence is that like the two are not independent of each other or something. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So it's either they are or they aren't, right? Um, like they are independent <laughs> or they are not for that. They are not the... independent. Okay. So it's it's worded weirdly, but. It's, it just means that there's some kind of relationship um, between between the two things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A human resources manager reported data from a recent involuntary reduction in force by her company. You are an attorney, and, and well, an attorney, and want to determine if age discrimination was a factor. The company reported the number of employees in two groups: forty years. Old or younger and over 40 years old. Yep. They are also very, reported the number of employees in each group who were terminated. Well, we had avocado toast. <laughs> you want to determine if both age groups were treated equally, which I Thank think has to be most appropriate for this now. Okay. So there's, <clears throat> let's see, two groups. And it's not paired because yeah, they're not paired. There's no relation. Would it be a test of two proportions? Maybe, or, but it doesn't give us like that. I don't know. 
I feel like it'd be more likely to be a Nova. Or what about two sample with independent sample? So I struggled with this one a little bit because um, I think just the the difference between like proportions and the t tests that we that we first learned. Mm -hmm. um, but one way, I don't know if this is the right way to think about it, but one way that helps me is that like, if there is data um, of like what the mean is or, you know, data just from, from the samples that's like numerical, then that's when we would use these t-tests a little bit more because mm -hmm. you're actually working with like the numbers. And I think proportions is just like, Oh, like just yes or no? Yes or no. It's kind of black and white, right? So, oh, okay. So it, that's what helped with me because, because it says, you know, they're either terminated or, or not terminated. And so, uh, yeah, so I, that's the way, that's how I thought about it. That's how I knew that it was within the proportions instead of the, the T test. Okay. So is it the test of two proportions? Yeah. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> a survey was conducted by a group of state lotteries. A random sample of 24. 106 adults completed the survey. A total of 248 were classified as heavy players. Of these, 152 were male. We wanted to determine the proportion of male heavy lottery players is different than the proportion of males in the population, which is 48.5%. Which hypothesis test would be most appropriate for the analysis? Hey, Bennett. Hi, everyone. Sorry I'm late. I oh, it's fine. Get the text coming through. And so once I got them, I came on. I don't get like super good reception in my house and so it's hard for me just to get text messages. Oh, gotcha. Like okay, anyway, I finished the quiz <laughs> though, so um, I can help. Oh, out. you already took it? Yeah, I already took it. Oh, nice. Cool. So. <laughs> okay. I don't know if this is one proportion or one sample. I feel like one proportion because it gives you the overall, like the number. Mm. Like it gives you the total and then it gives you how many are male. Interesting, okay. I don't know. Not feeling very confident. So would that be like N and X or? <clears throat> well, okay. So you have the adult sample like you're talking about and then the total that are heavy players Mm. I don't know. I have no idea. So, so Ben, we on um, no, question three. This is going through. You're good, man. You're good. Uh, so, for question three, I kind of thought about like the difference between proportions and the t-test as like t-test is when there is like numerical data um whereas with proportions it's just kind of like this part of the population had this characteristic or they didn't so it's just kind of binary mm -hmm. like yes or no right is that, is that kind of how you were thinking about it because now as we're going through question four um like I kind of see that that makes some sense because this would be question four would deal with proportions in my mind because you you know the 152 were male whereas the others are you know not male or female mm -hmm. um, so there's no like 
numbers mm -hmm. attached to mm -hmm. it. Is that how you thought about it, Ben? Kind of curious to see what you thought. Yeah, so, um, sorry, so you're talking about question four. Yeah. And, yeah. okay, so, yeah, as far as, like, the, like, it's just a characteristic as far as the proportion tests, and mm -hmm. so you would, yeah, that's pretty much how I only ever think about it. Okay, yeah, and so that makes some sense. Even if it is, like, in question three, where you have 40 years of your, old or younger that's still just simply a characteristic okay. rather than a number so you think about proportion as like categorical whereas yeah. with t-test it's it's quantitative okay that yeah. makes a lot of sense great <clears throat> cool yeah so then i guess you guys answered your own question so for number four it would just be a means of one proportion Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did this test too, Ben, by the way. So I was just okay. curious cool. what, uh, hey, you're, you're good. what you were thinking. So You're good. Awesome. Sorry, I missed a couple of them. And so um, I was just going through and putting down the ones that I missed and filling in the ones that I had done. Oh, gotcha. I'm going to throw in my trash really quick. How long did the test take you? Aaron? I think I spent like a solid two hours on it, honestly. Yeah. Because these <laughs> questions, I was like, okay, I know this will be all over the test. I just have to spend a lot more time on them. So. Right, right. Yeah. And it, like, I don't know, a lot of it, I, I assumed at first that it was just going to be over these, like, chapters, but it's just over everything that we've talked yeah. about. And yep. so I was like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I studied <laughs> the past couple of chapters, but not the whole thing. So, yeah, it's going to be a, a meeting bit harder. Of notes. <laughs> it's going to be one meeting. Oh, page no. of notes well, for me. yeah. So, so yeah, I was, I was taking a look at the, the quiz. It's 33 questions. And so it's shorter than this, at least. Yeah. But How long is the test? How many questions? 33 questions. Okay. Yeah, so not horrible, but still lengthy. <clears throat> okay. A student project compared the effectiveness so, of two different was question. What was question four? Sorry. Okay, it's fine. All right. My, my internet is not stable, so pardon me. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> A student project compared the effectiveness of two different combination locks. One of the locks turned clockwise first and the other turned counterclockwise first. They asked 25 students to participate in the study. Each student was given the combination to each lock and asked to open the locks. The time it took to open them, wait, it took them to open each lock was recorded. They want to determine if one of the locks is easier to open. Which hypothesis test would be most appropriate for this analysis? So would this be a test of two proportions then? Or because it's either wait. Would it be a Nova? Because it's so many. So in this one, you only have the two separate. Um, yeah. Two separate so you oh, it's just testing the two locks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so you can break it apart and think, okay, is it categorical or quantitative? Or do we end up with a whole bunch of, you know, numerical data? Or is it a yes or no? Oh, thing? and because it's time. Yeah. Then so it would be quantitative, right? Yeah, then you're up with, yeah. yep, quantitative. So would it be independent? Or would it be paired because the same students are using each lock? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so it would end up being paired because, um, like, after a kid uses the first lock and, and, you know, the time is recorded for that one, you know exactly what the the pair will be, right? Because he'll the same mm -hmm. student will just do the second one. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> For the next three questions, identify the one confidence interval that is most appropriate for the given situation. 
<clears throat> okay. A bank employs two appraisers when approving borrowers for mortgages. It is imperative that the appraisers value the same types of properties consistently. To make sure this is the case, the bank evaluates six properties that both appraisers mm -hmm. had recently valued. Which confidence interval will be most appropriate for this study? So for this uh, one, mm -hmm. I mean, this is one that I actually got wrong. So I'm trying to think through it again. Um, I mean, it's, it's quantitative. And so you have, because you're like seeing how they valued the six properties and it would be two. So it would be, I believe it would be paired sampled T confidence interval. Because there's two appraisers and they're both appraising all six properties. Yeah, and then the reason why I would think that they would be paired is because if you select the one property for the first appraiser, it has to be the same property for the second appraiser. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So the reason I like have a hard time I don't know, just like making sure I get it quantitative or the other one, whatever it is. Qualitative. Qualitative, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I totally butchered this one the first time. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> In a Wall Street Journal article on satisfaction with career paths, the percentage of psychology majors reporting they were satisfied with their career path was reported. The same data was also reported for accounting majors. You decide to construct a 95% confidence interval to see if the observed difference is significant. Which confidence interval would be the most appropriate for this study? Well, maybe I should go out and get a monitor. Mm. So it's percentage. So is that quantitative or is that? It's numbers. Wait. Yeah, it's numbers. Is it independent samples? So Sorry, this one. Look really quick. Sorry, go ahead, Ben. No, you're fine. I'm. Yeah, go I'm ahead. Actually, I'll wait a little. Well, so it actually, um, it's going to be uh, qualitative in this case because what you're reporting, because you mm -hmm. want to focus on like the actual data. So the reporting is satisfied or unsatisfied. Oh, uh, so then it's common so interval for two proportions. We're on the proportion side, and yeah, that's the right one. <clears throat> see, that's where I always get tripped up. Like, I see percentage, and I'm like, oh, numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's weird. What it's might weird. help is that, like, if you think about, like, a pie chart, like, a pie chart is always, like, taken by a proportion, so it's percentages of, like, a count. Uh -huh. And so um, that's what, like, helped me like identify this one is because I did the same thing. I like first saw percentage and I was like, okay, it's like a confidence interval. That's a T confidence interval. And, um, but then if you, like I said, think about just like, okay, we're counting how many people are satisfied with it. And that makes up the percentage mm -hmm. of the okay. pie chart or the bar graph, whatever. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right. Double stuff Oreo cookies are supposed to have twice the filling of regular Oreo cookies. You and some friends decide you want to know if that is a true assertion by the company who makes them. You take a sample of 55 double stuffed Oreo cookies and measure the amount of filling in each one. You need to construct a confidence interval 
to estimate the true mean filling amount of double step Oreos in order to compare it to the filling amount in regular Oreos, which confidence interval would be most appropriate for this study. So because we're doing, we're estimating the true mean, is it quantitative? Yeah, so the, the amount of filling mm -hmm. in, in each one. And so that can be more than just yes or no, right? That can be a whole bunch of different numbers. Yeah. So, yep, you're right. It's, it's quantitative in this case. I hope I'm, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So would it be independent though? Because, because like just because you're, picking one double stuff doesn't mean you're for sure picking a certain regular? Um, so in this case, oops, um, the only thing that you're taking a sample of is the double stuff Oreo cookies. And so you don't even, oh, like one sample. you only have one sample. Yeah. But you're on the right course. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Hmm. Okay. So is it Z? That would be my guess too. Um, Taylor, do you have the uh what's it called? The statistics toolbox? Oh yeah. If you open that up really quick. That's what helped me with this problem. <clears throat> because I can still get like the single confidence intervals mixed up. And so I honestly don't know like when it like becomes a Z confidence interval. But mm -hmm. if you look at the one sample T test, um, then you see that it has just like a single like number, like a Mm -hmm. uh, quantitative value mm -hmm. um, and so that's like what helped me to see like okay it's a one sample t interval yeah that's... Um, I don't know if Aaron knows like when it would be a z confidence interval I think I mean, because it says we just haven't ever come across so it's actually um the Z-confidence interval, you can do a Z-test only when you know the population standard deviation. And so that's right. Uh, that's the only thing that distinguishes these two. And so I think in these questions, it should be pretty obvious. If it says something like, you know, the standard, the population standard deviation of all double stuff Oreo cookies is this, then you're okay. It's a Z-confidence interval. But if it's just the data and your sample, um, then you're you're going with the T confidence interval. So yeah, standard deviation. That's pop population standard deviation is the only thing that distinguishes those two. Awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. Make sure I wrote that down. <clears throat> Which one of the following best defines the notion of the significance level of a hypothesis test? I hate these questions. Um, I got it wrong. Oh no. I got this one wrong the first time I took this quiz. Yeah, I always, I'm always like, oh yeah, obvious, like it's obvious, it's this. Um, <laughs> yeah. Get it wrong. <laughs> okay. And then it's something that you were sure it wasn't. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So if that helps you guys, you know. <laughs> yeah. Clear as mud. Yeah, so if you think you find the right answer, check again. <laughs> or just be smarter than us. 
Yeah, that's easy. Did you yeah. get A for number nine? Did you also choose did you did you choose A? Yeah, I chose A. And it was so wrong. Nice. Yeah. C. Wow. That would be my guess. I don't know. Yeah, that seems like it's not a probability, that's not right. Um I guess hmm. C. Oh, no. I'm in trouble. You'll have to ask it. I don't know actually what the right answer is. So. Yeah, this one I had to look up and like think that it's it time. takes me a long time to like think through why, but it's mm -hmm. actually the probability of a, the type one error. Um, oh gosh. Yeah, and so if you go if you go back to the exam review from the last exam that we took, mm -hmm. there's a little line in there that just says, "Oh, by the way, the level of." Uh, significance um, is the probability of a type one error. And so the type one error, I get the two mixed up. I get it mixed up with the type two error, but it's um, it's either, you know, rejecting a null hypothesis that shouldn't be rejected or, you know, accepting a null hypothesis that should be rejected. It's one of those two that I need to go back and study, so. I always get them mixed up. Okay, which one of the following best defines the notion of the p-value of a hypothesis test? Is that this one? Yeah, I think. Huh? Oh, wait. I think it's yeah. Yep, that's correct. Oh yes. So sorry, what did you get? See. Number ten is C. But well, why that? <laughs> I was thinking it was C and B. Yeah, so so Veronica went and so do you remember the, the applet? the like the curve thing that we've been using yes so when when you shade like one side of it what mm -hmm. you're saying is like okay we're testing to see if what we get is at least this extreme or mm -hmm. even more right mm -hmm. like especially you can visualize it like if you're shading just a little sliver part of the the applet then you're saying, okay, like this z-score or anything further from, you know, the mean is, mm -hmm. um, is, is the p-value. So that's what we're, that's what we're doing. Hope that makes sense, but yeah. Okay, that's fine. All right. Suppose you create a 95% confidence interval for a mean and get 10, 20. You've been told to report this by saying something like, we are 90% confident that the true mean is between 10 and 20. Exactly what does this mean? I, oh, I got this one wrong in the last test. <clears throat> okay, so it's not the last one. Because apparently whenever it says chance, that means it's wrong. Oh, oh. good to know. That's yeah. what I learned. And then, oh, and my tutor also said when it says like the percentage twice, then that typically means that it's right. So oh, like really? Mm. What? So this. If it says the percentage twice? Yeah, so since it says like 95% of all 95% confidence intervals, that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't make sense to me either, actually, but, but it's, it's the right answer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, like every time I read it, I'm like, there's no way this is right. Like, 
Yeah. Right, that's a trick. In the English language, <laughs> this should not be right. Yeah, when I, see that, when I see the last part of that question, whenever it pops up on a test, exactly what does this mean? I'm like, okay, where's that nonsense statement? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> all right, the one that makes the least amount of sense, that's probably it. Probably, yeah, that's funny. You take a simple random sample of 100 adults from a town in the western United States to determine the proportion of those in town who invest in the stock market. Assume the unknown population proportion or percentage of people in town who invest in the stock market is 30%. What is the mean of the distribution of the sample proportions? That's the 0.30, isn't it? Yeah. Standard deviation. Can I use that toolbox for this? Oh, actually, I think you can't. Mm -hmm. Which one would I use? I think if you put equals. Right, S T D E V. I just don't even know like where to put my information. <laughs> okay, maybe that was wrong. I got like 70 something. I just need that. Okay, let's see. And I when you're studying this one, did you 12? Did you put it, oh wait, no, 13. Did you put it in the Excel or is there like by hand how to solve for it? Um, so I just did that one for this hand. one. I, I actually put it in Excel. Mm -hmm. um, I believe, take a sample. Oh, just kidding. Yeah, I did it by hand. That's so, so it's the square root of here. I'll show you. Hopefully, you can see it. Um, so it's this one. It's the one with the oh. square root of p times, p times one, one minus, minus p, p over n. Over n. Yeah, so that's how you find the standard deviation. <clears throat> On a quick side note, I finally got the sample survey um, emails mm -hmm. in today. Mm -hmm. It was just like an hour ago. So good, good, good. Um, yeah. I just need to make the adjustments to um, whatever it is that our teacher, I forget. <laughs> Why do I always forget his name? Um, Rob Paulson. Robert. Paulson. Yeah. Yeah. So what brother Paulson had mentioned to us that we need, um, hold on, I'll download it real quick while you guys are going through this. Or was anyone able to look at that? I haven't looked at it yet. Okay. So, you got point zero zero two. Yep. <laughs> okay, I got something different, so I probably just did my math wrong. <laughs> 
What did you get, Ella? Like 0. 0.4, 0. 0.04 something. That one's right. The line is wrong. Just yeah. make sure that you have like your parentheses. And... Oh, mine is right? Yeah, yeah. yours is right. 0. 0. 0.04. Oh, you know why? Because I didn't take the yeah, square root yeah. of it. Okay, I thought I just did it wrong. <laughs> no, I didn't do mine right. <laughs> <laughs> What is the probability? Is it this unit one? Is that right? Point zero four six. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Wow. This one you have to use like another equation again. I need to get my freaking notes. I took them to a friend's house and didn't. Yeah, for this one, I just I looked at the exam review for the test this week, and it's it's on there. Use that one. Anthony. <laughs> yeah, it's that value minus mean one. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. It still feels strange. The way Aaron is smiling like this, I wonder what's going on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little, little distracted, but I, I'm continuing to participate. My brother and wife are here, and we are doing a little. Oh, your cheese date. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Tuesday is cheese night, so. Oh. I can't remember what cheese Sorry, we have. Sorry, brother. No, it's good. It's good. I wish I could share some with you. We probably have more than we need, so. Anyway, I'm still participating. Just, just know that. So ignore me if I'm smiling. I'm not laughing at anyone or anything. So. <laughs> That's okay. <clears throat> okay, I got a negative number, so that's not right. For um. 14. Yeah. So um, what, what negative number did you get? Negative 1.087. Nice. So that is the Z score. Oh, and then I put it in the applet. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Oh my goodness. What a life. All right. It's less than uh, point one three eight five. Yep. I just did point one three eight. Okay. Wouldn't it be one three nine? Um, I when I was doing it, that was the one that I got and that's what I got as well. And it's right? Uh, yeah, it's it just was an right. issue of just an issue of rounding. It just depends on what what exact number you put in the applet. So <clears throat> all right. Okay. These next ones I totally butchered. So all right. I'm gonna need your help. <laughs> okay, so um okay. In clinical trials of acupril. 2,142 subjects were divided into two groups. The 1,563 subjects in the experimental group received the drug. The 579 subjects in the control group received the placebo. Of the 1,563 in the experimental group, 61 experienced dizziness as a side effect. Of the 579 subjects in the control group, 15 experienced dizziness as a side effect. Let P1 be the true proportion of people who experience dizziness while taking that drug. Let P2 be the true proportion of people who experience dizziness but do not take the drug. Okay. 
So is it the two sample or is it? Wait. <coughs> yeah, I did a two proportion Z test. Okay. But again, I got this one wrong. So I'm pretty sure that's right though. Two proportion Z test? Uh, yeah, it's like the, yeah. That's like the whole mm -hmm. term for it. Aaron, is that one right? Is it the um, two proportion for this one? Um, yes. Wicked. Yeah, I think so. I'm just going to pull up mine real quick to be sure. I think it is, though. Where did I put that? So. Okay, so P1. Oh, shoot. That's why. Did you switch them? Mm -hmm. No, I put 179 instead of 579. <laughs> uh, that'll do it. Ridiculous. I was like, why on earth did I get this one wrong? I felt so sure about it. Mm. That's why. We'll get you. Yeah, it's the two proportions. Yeah. I just okay, so I got point <clears throat> zero one six for the margin of error. Get it. Looks good. And lower bound, did you get negative point zero two nine? I got point zero zero three. What did I do wrong? Wait, that's. Is your um, what's your confidence interval? Point nine five. Um, can you move your Excel sheet up. Whoa. I have it on different one. Different. Yeah, I have it on different one. Oh. I can put it on this one. Let's see, two proportions. So my N is. Let's get rid of that right now. Okay, so my N is 579. Yeah, and then your X <laughs> is 61. And then your N2 is 57, wait, sorry. Wait, wait. 579, oh, sorry, 15. so 1563 is your N value. For the top one? Yeah, for the top one. Okay, and then five, 79 is your n for the bottom and 15 is your x value for the bottom one 61 is your x value for the top one oh, okay i should have my numbers in backwards do you get 0 0.029 for the upper? um yeah There we go. Okay. And is the hypothesis for 18, is it the first one? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Test statistic. Oh gosh, it always messes up. Okay.
So number 16 is negative, 0 0.003. Yes. Okay. This thing can be, can be a bit tricky sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for 21, um, I would say failed to accept. Yeah. Or failed to reject. Failed to reject. Yeah, because our p value is greater than our level of significance of 0.05. Gosh, I always get them like backwards. Yeah. Also, there are too many options. What happened to just ABC? ABC. <laughs> <laughs> I have like tilt F or something. A, B, C, D, E, F, Y, F, F. Okay. Is it no, I failed to reject? Right. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. The survey was conducted. Uh, Wait, which one was it? Sorry. It's okay. The last one. It's okay. The survey was conducted of 1,279 randomly selected adults aged 18 and older. They were asked, are you a morning person or a night person? The hypothesis for the study are, being a morning or evening person is independent of age. And then the alternative is, being a morning or evening person is not independent of age. The results of the survey are given here. Conduct a test of independence. Use level 0.05. So it's chi-squared, right? Yeah, sorry. <clears throat> A test statistic, I got. 6.579? Yeah. That's what I got. And she's like really slow at doing everything. So she does that. She gets it up there and then she goes, Do you have Tito's? And they're like, Yeah, copies. Um. So for 24, you reject because p value is less than 0 0.05. Oh, no, it's greater. Duh. Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. wow. <laughs> Let's see if we fail to reject. So it's no, the p value is greater than 0 0.05? Mm -hmm. So if you play, what was, what was, what was 22? Sorry, I, I stepped out. Sorry. Two questions. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so. if you, uh, sorry, it's, it's 6.579, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. And then, do you need 23, too? No, 23 is fine. Okay. Yeah, got it. Perfect. Um, we have... Insufficient. Yes. Well, why you didn't make the, the possible answers a lot? Right? Just pull, like, three. <laughs> mm -hmm. Insufficient evidence say that being a morning or evening person is independent of age. Mm. But wouldn't it be the alternative, which is not? Yes. That's the last one. Gosh, I hate that it's a double negative. Right? It's like, Same you can't thing. ever say that it's sufficient or you can't ever say that it's dependent. It's I'm not always. Sure why. Yeah. Okay. Did you get them, Veronica? <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank okay. you. Okay. Uh huh. A recent book noted that only 20% of all investment managers outperformed the Dow Jones Industrial Average over a five-year period. Oh, and law, <laughs> she's tired. <laughs> a random sample of 200 investment managers that had graduated from one of the top 10 business programs in the country were followed over a five-year period. 
50 to outperform the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Let P be the true proportion of investment managers who graduated from one of the top 10 business programs who outperformed the Dow Jones over a five year period. <clears throat> Good night. I know I have no idea what to do for this one. Okay. That was awful. So out of 250, I performed it. Okay, true proportion. So which, oh. oh. Like that? Is it that? Wait, sorry. Is it the one proportion Z? Um, here, yes. Excellent. Yeah. That's what I got. What did you say? Where? Yeah. Okay. okay, suppose you have been in charge of designing the study. What sample size would be needed to construct a margin of error of 2% on the knife and set confidence? Um. Oh, I need to find the sample size for me. Yeah, so Taylor, do you see mm -hmm. um, that equation there with n equals um, in, in parentheses z over m squared times p? The one, let's see. First, yeah, there we go. Okay. Oh, Dal, we're going to turn the sample size. Okay. You're good. There's a lot of stuff on there, so yeah. What did you guys get? Oh, 
I got um, 1,083. Wow, I'm way off. Holy heck. I don't know if that's right. <laughs> I have no idea if that's right. So I got 1,537. Good oh, night. Okay. What did I do wrong? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Aaron, when you were putting in that um, equation for the margin of error, um, mm -hmm. did you put point zero oh two? Yeah. Yeah. And then. Yeah. Um, what was the other thing? Then the p-value is just point 0.2 for this estimate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but then 1.96 one, 1. for then the, this. Okay, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay, let me see. So then do we use that? What the heck? Apparently I, need to help. To to I could try to do it on paper real quick or try to find where I did it. I just, I think I'm just really tired or something and my math is terribly off. Coronavirus has got us down. Something like that. Let's see. Yeah. I woke up early. <laughs> um, okay. Times P times one minus P. Yeah, it's not too pretty, but this is. Um, this is what I did. And then, oh, I'm totally oh, on. All of this becomes 9,000, I think 604. You just times that by this whole business here. The Why is it 1.96? Oh, because the confidence interval got the confidence. 1.96, yeah, for the 95% confidence interval. Yeah. yeah, hope that helps. Sorry about my handwriting. No worries. It's better than mine. <laughs> Yep. So, so fifteen thirty six or fifteen thirty seven? Yep, fifteen thirty seven. I think I got a different one for 20 minutes. Is which one did you get? I'm just guessing. Isn't it like, saying that for the alternative that P is greater than P2? Oh, uh, let me see. Is it saying performs better than other people's P2? Yes, better than, you're right. So did you get this one? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. And then 30, did you get, have you done this one yet? Yeah, I got A for that one. Okay. And then I got negative 2.406. Negative 2.406. Yeah. And the P value. Is that what you guys got? Yes. No. Wait, can you go back to your Excel sheet? Because you switched the hypothesis test. 
Yeah, so you have to make that one greater. And then the value up there is in 0. 0.330. <laughs> you want it to it be is. 0. 0.2. Oh, thank you. Good catch. Yep, that looks better. Saving the day. <clears throat> Okay, so it's 1.768, is that what you guys got? Yeah. Yeah. 1.039. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's less than the significant value. You reject. Yeah. Reject. So there's sufficient evidence to conclude. So B or no, A. Yes, I rejected. Yeah. Okay. Goodness. That is a paragraph. Whoa. You don't really need to read the. <laughs> yeah, that the whole first paragraph is just. In case you I finished reading it, I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I was like, I had nothing to do. That's funny. Okay, to compare <clears throat> their ability to translate with similar computer translations software, Cohen took a random sample of 100 blocks of Spanish text, each of which contained 310 words, and used Farrah to translate each of these to English. The blue score was calculated for each of the 100 blocks. These scores are recorded in the data file. He watched each data to see his mean blue score differs from the mean blue score of another leading translation software, which has a population mean of 0 0.295. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Is it a one sample test? One sample two test? I think so. a lot of information. <laughs> okay, do we need to change the hypothesis? Or? Let's see. Um, I just he just wants to see if it differs from the mean, so... So just not equal to? I think so. And then, and then we change it to 0. 0.295. Mm-hmm. 0.295. The lower bound, to get 0. 0.281. 0. 0.282. Yeah. What did I do wrong? Uh, your confidence interval. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. It's that little stuff that always throws me off. Yeah, right. Yeah, that looks better. Um, Good night. This thing goes on forever. <laughs> the the rest of it's pretty straightforward yeah mm -hmm. it's just you input this data and then okay zero six input the values um, 
Okay, so after the one straight and then up, mm -hmm. and you turn left right there and kind of snake up and turn left. Again. So in this one, again, your p-value is less than your level of significance. Mm -hmm. um, so we would say that there, that it would be different. All right. Than, yeah, because we we couldn't say that we have sufficient evidence to. So the reason that like d is wrong is because mm -hmm. we wouldn't ever have like sufficient evidence to say that it's equal. We would only mm -hmm. have insufficient evidence to say that they're not different. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so yeah, for this one, it's, we just have sufficient evidence to say that the true mean is different than that. Sorry, you guys, I'm struggling tonight. You're fine. Okay. You're good. <laughs> okay. I right, too, so it's all good. <laughs> Okay, so that's it. Oh, so it's this. So this one. Morning height and afternoon height. Oh, so it's paired, right? Yeah. Sorry. Is this one paired? The yeah. yeah. Okay. Hi, sorry. My internet is just going off and on. They're taller in the morning than in the evening. So we just put that they're not equal? Um, I put that they're, because it's seeing if they're taller in the morning, so I put oh. greater than. Okay. And then lower bound, I got 8.728. I don't know if that's what everyone else got. Yeah. I got that. So I was saying that location, so you know what to do. That's statistics. Uh, please take your time, sorry. I don't think there's any. Which one did you need help with, Veronica? <sighs> My internet went off on me from question 30, 34? 34. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and um, okay, so you can go on to the next one. But how 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 are you able to find, get night nine? Is it night nine? Yeah, so it's just from when we inputted the data from the uh, the blue scores excel sheet mm -hmm. um after you input that data the excel sheet just tells you the answers pretty much it'll have a field that says degrees of freedom and it'll just say 99 under there so all of that was just from when we went through the excel sheet three seconds please okay you can you can go on please Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, you can move on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, 40. <sighs> okay. Yeah, you can go on.
Thank you. Thank hey, you. Veronica, if you would like, so there's just like the last little part. Um, we're not quite there yet, but questions 40 to uh, 45. Yeah. It's it's kind of the same process of um, putting data into the spreadsheet and figuring things out. If you want, I don't know how you feel about this, but I think this would really help you for the test. Okay. You could share your screen and we can help you, uh, just help talk you through. Maybe we are already that <coughs> Are we that far? Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we're already that far. Sorry about that. But That's fine. Would that would something like that help, Veronica? Because, you know, we want you to do well on the tests, and and we we'll can give you the answers without maybe explaining um, as well as. Yeah, sure. um, yeah, I understand. Thank you. Um,